So, I'm returning to this topic of anamorphic depth of field effect. Now, something I've been meaning to do for a long while now is to create a series of videos on the same topic of various lengths to see which is the best length of video to make according to what gets viewed the most. So, this is going to be the call it long winded video. I'll aim for about 10 minutes and I'm going to explain that in the first video I didn't follow the prescribed method that Len laid down for me. I uh, took his idea and uh, adapted it to work because I ran into a problem which turns out to be a bug in Bryce. So what I'm going to do is show you his method, then I'm going to show you his method plus the bit I did that exposed the bug, and then I'm going to show you another way to get around the bug. So this is all going to be in this one video, so I'm going to start by following his method. So we create our scene as normal, that's done set our camera angle, I've chosen my camera position now set the scaling tool to camera space, so edit this control here, camera space now we need to select all the objects in the scene and group them so select all and group and then I need to compress the scene, well initially he said stretch the group horizontally so it's twice as wide um, but stretching and compression is quite similar so let's let's follow the instructions though so let's see, we need to stretch it horizontally. So that's going to be in the X direction. I've hold the Alt key down, it'll do it evenly. So I'll try and make it twice as wide. And then I'll modify the document setup to a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. And then I need to reposition the group so that the uh, the objects are now. So let's see, let's have a repositioning this group. Um, is it tricky? Uh, seems a bit big at the moment, that's my problem. Yeah, I'll probably have to widen the field of view. I wonder what effect that's going to have. See, I hadn't anticipated that. Okay, well, that looks that looks promising. So there we go. Um, I couldn't. I suppose I'd, I don't want to alter the distance from the camera. Uh, so and render the scene and compress it horizontally by fifty percent. Okay, so that's rendering. And now we'll we'll look at what I did that that was sort of following the same approach. So. I started here and create the scene as normal and set the camera angle and then set the scaling tool to camera space so we set it to camera space now and then uh, select all objects in the group and then group them now what I did was I tried to use this tool here the 3D transformations tool which is relative to coordinates so it should obey camera space but it doesn't down to 50% and the vertical axis so there we go that's compressed it and then set the document setup to a 2 to 1 and then give that a render so that's what I did and things went wrong for me so here's my solution now oh, I've launched Bryce too quickly uh, if you have multiple instances of Bryce open as I often do uh, you launch it too quickly it can bring that serial number up so there's another bug um, possibly that's a Windows bug though rather than one that's directly related to Bryce, I don't know. Okay, right, so in this case what I want to do is compress the scene vertically by 50% in camera space. Now in the first video I did this by a rather convoluted method but I thought of a simpler way of doing this. So if I switch to a side view, the camera, which is now selected, what I can do is I can copy the matrix of the camera so that just copies its attributes then if I create a default Bryce cube and go edit and paste matrix that cube now adopts the attributes of the camera as much as it can so if I now select everything except the cube and the camera and use the attributes control here to link these objects so make them the children of this cube that I've created then they will now, if I could get this operating in object space, be placed under the control of this cube. So if I press control Z there. Right, the thing about this cube is it's now wrapped around the camera, which means the camera can't see out. So if I go to the attributes and make it hidden, that will mean that it won't appear in the render. And then I can use my dialog here, 3D transformations, to compress the y-axis 50%. And in this case, it does obey object space so it didn't obey camera space but it does obey object space which uh, which is handy so now we go back to this view and use the document setup and change the aspect ratio to 2 to 1 and give that a render 
so we've got this render which was just done by uh, guesswork and this render which is going to turn out wrong and this render which I've shown you a method that will hopefully uh, produce precise results so what I'll do now is I'll pause my video and we'll come back to it and uh, we'll see what they look like when they're done so right I've got all these rendered out and I've reloaded the original scene as a reference so here's the the first one where I stretched it horizontally what I hope is about 50 percent here's the second one where I I wonder now I'm just trying to think whether it whether it's make a difference between stretching horizontally or vertical anyway this is where I use the camera uh, space but use the 3d transformation tool to compress it 50 percent this is where I use the box control to compress it 50 percent and oh, like I said there's my original one so let's bring these into PaintShop Pro and resize the image back to its original size and see where we got well clearly I stretched that a bit too far horizontally and you can see that the lighting looks substantially different as a result of stretching because obviously when it's stretching horizontally the stones have turned out flatter than they are in real life so the lighting looks flatter so perhaps it would be worth doing that one again but uh, using the, the vertical compression and seeing if the results are the same as stretching horizontally so following uh, lens method once more but with a slight alteration that instead of stretching it twice horizontally I'll compress it to 50% vertically but again just doing it by eye so create our scene as normal select the camera angle select the scaling tool to camera space here we go uh, select all the objects in the scene group them and then use the control here I'll hold key down compress vertically I'm going to guess 50% if I could lower it down into the view so that it's back to centered add it and uh, no uh, document setup that's what I want and change the aspect ratio to 2 to 1 so I'll just give that a quick render I'll go back to Painter Pro so that was my horizontally stretched version let's get my version where I used the camera space but compressed it using the transformation tool and here you can see hopefully that things have become badly distorted it looks as if the camera is looking further over the cube than it should remember what our original one looked like I have it here somewhere okay so we're looking to recreate this view that's oh, so going to cover that up isn't it so you can see that this is clearly for a different angle so something's got a bit out of uh, kilter there which is what I encountered before which is why I changed my approach and then in this one we find it here bring this one in this is where I used a box to control the compression in camera space so hopefully this one will turn out right and look more like the original did so if I, if I just bring the original in here to compare it so here's my original one and here's my one after I have uh, added the effect so the, there's a slight different in shadow as well but then again because it changed the geometry and the lighting didn't change with it so it's, that's another problem to solve then you get uh, some alteration because there's a HDRI backdrop as well that's going to be affected because the reflections are going to change too so let's have a look how this one's doing here so with this what I did was instead of stretching it to twice its width in camera space I compressed it to half its height or or thereabouts it's a guess but it was very easy to do I mean suppose that's one of the things to take from this is that uh, lens method is the easiest it's just the fact that it can't do it precisely because of the bug in Bryce that means that we've got to find a workaround so I'll focus on the workaround in later videos and get them shorter and then shorter still and then hopefully we'll see whether people like the long-winded explanation of things or whether they're happier just to have the information uh, in, in short bursts. So I'm just going to pause the video, let this render out, and then I'll have a look at it in PaintShop Pro when it's done. Right, that one's rendered out, and I've called it 4D. So we'll bring this one in, and I'll adjust the image size by resizing it back to its original scale. So this was done with vertical compression that was done with horizontal stretching um, but I had to adjust the field of view uh, because I couldn't move the camera backwards and forwards because it would have changed the depth of field so perhaps what I should have done was 
change the camera, I was told not to change the camera position, I should have moved it back on its axis possibly in camera space and then change the depth of field which would be, you see there's a lot of there's a lot of options here for cr creating different effects and because I don't necessarily understand all the implications of what those, the results of those might be I don't really know what to advise I mean it's an interesting effect but un until you've you've got to, got control of a lot of other things that you need to sort out first you wouldn't really be reaching for this as to this is a very definitely a final stage in your uh, render process so maybe what I should do is look at this one again the stretching horizontally but instead of changing the field of view I'm going to I'm going to pull the camera back along its axis and set the depth of field again so here we go you'll definitely remember this method by the time we're done so this is going to be slightly longer than a 10 minute video but I did want to make a longer video just to explore the ideas so here we go um, right where's my list of things to do so we uh, create the scene yes set the camera angle yes set the scaling tool to camera space got it okay select all the objects in the scene and group them and now I'm going to stretch this horizontally so if I hold the uh, control key down, well, let me do it by stages. No, what about shift? Some, some, sometimes you've got options out. That might be 50% actually. There you go. Yeah, that might be 50%. So that might have solved that issue, but it's moved slightly out of kilter there. So holding the shift and the alt key down while doing the resize will allow you to do it in steps in camera space, hopefully. So that's worth knowing. So I'm going to include that in the next video, if nothing else. Right, I recenter this view change the document setup to a two to one but it's it's filling the view too much now so what I'm gonna do is move the camera just back along its its axis away from the object so it reframes my view and then I select my cube and adjust the depth of field because I've moved my camera back so instead of widening the field of view now I've adjusted my depth of field and then give that a render and we'll see how that does now this may be uh, su as successful as the other adjustment method which means I've got two things to cover in my medium length video and then I can just cover the, them very quickly in the short video so uh, this is looking quite promising obviously it's going to take a little while to render so I shall pause the video again and then we'll see how this one looks when I bring it into my paint package right so that renders done let's see how that looks when it's been resized so okay well that one look too, doesn't look too bad either but it still looks distorted um, so I'm not convinced that if we hold the alt key down it's still giving us an exact adjustment in the appropriate space in fact it looks it looks a bit uh, elongated let's have a look in the wireframe view let's compare how these okay so that's not distorted in camera space did I forget to set the control I set the control but it's but it's distorted it uh, horizontally in world space which is interesting so if, if I've got this camera space setting and uh, just this that's camera space X I suppose that is sort of correct because the baseline is still the same. I think I think we're still dealing with a bug here. Well, let's have a look. Let's and then we do it here. Oh, it's, it's responding to camera space Y, but it doesn't appear to be corresponding to camera space X in the same way. See, there's just too many variables in this to really get to grips with what's going on. As you can see, you, you can produce a lot of different effects by these various distortions, but it's difficult to see sometimes which particular axis it's working in correctly. So I would have thought that if, if, it, if it adjusted in camera space X, a, du a doubling width would have been the same as a reduction in height. But uh, as, as I've just demonstrated, if I managed to do that right, I'll have to check my own video to see whether I followed the steps correctly that doesn't seem to be the case so there's still some way to go in understanding this and uh, maybe in the next video I do 
I'll get to grips with that. So there you go, that's your long-winded version with lots of different options that have been created uh, using this effect and taking various approaches that on the face of it seem quite similar but still result in, uh, in, in radically different uh, effects at the end of it. Okay then, so that's the end of the video. Hopefully we'll be more coherent next time.